Hey, what's going on? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the AMD RX 6600 series GPUs, the XT and non XT. Very similar cards, though, especially when we take into account the past. But we're just be going over some speculation, some thoughts on the GPU, and whether or not it's going to be profitable for mining. So, first off, let's look at the specs of what we know so far. Now, we don't have confirmation on the dates, uh, but we expect it to be launched sometime in the beginning of August, some say August 11th but everything is still up in the air and also not all of the metrics we're going to go over is 100 percent confirmed however with the data that we have so far we can draw conclusions now these speculation videos are just based off of experience and what i see once i have the hardware numbers and the facts especially when it comes to memory bus and bandwidth but these cards are going to come with 8 gigabytes of memory, and it's supposed to be the competitor to 3060, which comes with 12 gigabytes of memory, and it's GDR6, not 6X. However, there's a couple concerning factors here. The way that AMD is limiting or mitigating miners seeing these cards as attractive is by making changes at the architectural level, while NVIDIA is opting for driver or BIOS level. It really depends, and that's why we got Rev2, Rev3, and all this other craziness going on. Anyways with the memory bus being so limited and this is one of the biggest things that i talked about with the 6700 xt is that's a huge handicap a 128 bit bus is a huge handicap now we know the memory bandwidth is gonna be around 256 uh pricing we're not gonna even talk about just yet but we'll get that in the end um you're basically gonna wind up getting a slightly better or newer 580 590 480 with mem strap timings and modifications these gpus are not going to be super attractive at least to me for mining hence the gamers can rejoice because they'll be able to get a what people are considering uh low-end cards i think um i used to think these cards were mid-range but they're i guess they're low-end now so low-end uh gpu for great 1080p maybe depending on the title 1440p gaming um, and less attractive to miners. However, that doesn't mean it's going to be less attractive to scalpers or people who want to take advantage of the current market conditions. Um, I will say that don't take, don't worry too much about streaming processors. Compute units is the biggest thing that I look at. But we notice that there's pretty much the same hash rate between the 6800 XT and the 6800. Right? They're they're pretty much the exact same. So the compute units or the 12 extra compute units that the XT has didn't really play a big part. The streaming processors didn't really play a big part. What played a big part um, is the memory clocks, the memory bus, and bandwidth. And you can see that they're pretty much the same on the 6800 and the 6800 XT. While they're the, they are the same for what looks to be the 6800 uh, 6, XT and non-XT. So, as far as speculation and data and all that good stuff, I believe the 6600 XT and 6600 is going to perform the exact same. So, if you can get the cheaper model and save some money go for it now we're still getting more and more data as it comes out but one of my biggest concerns is with gdr6 it gets hot it's flip chip it output most of its heat towards the back and there's no back plate at least on this model and there's no memory thermal pads um, if you've been a subscriber of the channel you would know that we battled issues with the 5000 series from amd and we battled issues with 3000 series ever since the gddr5 5x 6 6x there's been memory thermal control issues when it comes to high compute workloads, especially memory intensive workloads. And so not having a backplate or, or thermal pads on that is very concerning. Uh, looking at the past GPUs, the 5600 XT was actually a pretty damn good performer. And it actually had a lesser memory clock, but it had a 192 bit bus. And this comes with less. So therefore, I believe the 5600 XT would be the better card for mining than this particular card. Um, with everything and all the data that I put out there on Reddit and stuff like that, here's the raw metrics for you in case you were just wanting to get to this part really quick. I speculate that the 6600 XT and non-XT, again, will perform the same. And we're going to get anywhere from 32 to 38 mega hash mining some type of Ethereum token or ETH hash cryptocurrency. Because it has 8 gigabytes of memory, you don't have to worry too much about the DAG file being too big. I know ETH 2.0 is on the horizon. However, there are other tokens that utilize the same algorithm. So that's going to come into uh, to play. With Ethereum Classic, same hash rate because they're basically the same, even though it's ETC hash. Ravencoin, 
Um, unlike the 6700, which got about you know 23 mega hash, we're probably going to see 14 to 18 mega hash mining Ravencoin or Kapow. Uh, so my prediction and my information, basically, if you just want some numbers, it's about a 30% performance reduction off of the 6700 XT's mining hash rate performance. Uh, it's going to give us the same thing for Conflux, the 14 to 18 mega hash. For mining Firo, we're going to see probably 2 to 2.5 mega hash mining MTP, uh, which is the algorithm or cryptocurrency, which is called Firo. And then for Prague Pal variant type coins, we're probably going to see 13 to 16 mega hash, whereas the 6700 XT was able to get 21, almost 22 mega hash. Uh, and then for Kryptonite GPU type coins, uh, we're probably going to see 1500 to 1800 hashes on this particular GPU. Now, is that attractive to you? That's for you to decide, but when I pop in all the numbers at the top cryptocurrency to mine right now at time of filming, uh, with an average of 33 mega hash, a power of 80 watts, which is pretty much on par with the 5600 XT, but the 5600 XT was able to get 43 with the mem mod, and Igor's lab and the Red Bios team have not uh, get, released any updates for us to utilize the memory straps or any optimizations with the memory yet for the 6000 series um and at 10 cent per kilowatt hour one one percent fees and a hardware cost of 280 i'm just using that based off of uh this pricing is actually let's go ahead and increase that let's go ahead and this bar park it and do 325 calculate that's going to bring us about a dollar 88 a day and break even is going to be 173 days so it would still be profitable now but if the cryptocurrency market takes a big hit or something goes down, um, then not as profitable, especially if your electricity cost is even higher than 10 cents per kilowatt hour. And on top of that, taking into account, there's no thermal pads on the back of these cards, no back plates, and maybe not on this model. There may be for other models we'll have to see, but the cooler is very basic. It's not gonna do a very good job. And when you're running high workloads, especially memory intensive workloads, that might be a particular of an issue. So to me, these cards are not attractive. To me, these cards are not something that as a miner, I would be enthused to get, which is what AMD's goal is because they want these cards in the hands of gamers who can utilize it with 1080p, 1440p, depending on the title, gaming. So let me know your thoughts down below. That's my speculation, my numbers, my everything that I have for you guys. If I do get a chance to test a card, I will always post my data on Reddit. If you haven't checked, the, checked me out on there, I'm at CMB Jacks. And uh, this is just based off of experience and numbers and, and data that I, I have. We'll see more and more as more and more updates come out and these details are finalized on these cards. But expect the 6600 XT and non-XT to perform the same. Whatever card you can get your hands on that's the cheapest, uh, but has a decent cooler on it, maybe something you may be interested in. And a big caveat with these GPUs is I noticed that the 6000 series does not play well in a mixed rig with the 590, 580, and stuff like that. Whenever you update drivers to allow your 6700 or 6800 to work, the 590, 580, and stuff like that the, gets kernel errors or OpenCL errors, stuff like that. So either you're going to build a 5000 series mining rig with you know 580s, 590s mixed in, uh, 480s, uh, or a 6000 series. So you're either going to go all or nothing. It's either going to be all 6000 series GPUs or 5000 and lower because of driver issues. And I'm not sure why AMD hasn't released a driver pack that includes what the 590, 580 needs as well as being able to support the new cards. But that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and notification bell to stay up to date. As well as check out any links down below to help support the channel like to dojoy.com where you can get sweet Serpent X merch and much more from various content creators in the space. You guys take care. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.